I warned about this two years ago at the height of Black Lives Matter in May and June 2020. I looked into the organisation, only took me 10 minutes, and I said to myself, I don't like the sound of any of this. Spoke to my family and friends. They didn't know anything about the organisation, what their aims were, um, dismantling capitalism, getting rid of the nuclear family. Um, and I put a, a blog out just to tell people the facts I found on their own website. And for that crime, I was branded a racist, sacked out of the charity I founded, um, and that was how I became infamous. Well, it certainly did, and thank goodness, because you got involved with the Free Speech Union, who, which I would advocate everyone sign up to. I think they're brilliant. But the, the accusations against BLM in the US now, Nick, do you think that the gloss, the sheen, has been well and truly rubbed off of this outfit? Do you actually think that they've been exposed now? Yeah, and I think the exposing started over a year ago. You know, we had the scandal last year of Black Mansions Matter, the founder of Black Lives Matter owns four really expensive houses. People didn't like the look of that and no one knew where the money came from. Now we have their tax returns basically coming in now um, and people are looking at that and, and saying, I didn't donate money to you for you to spend my money on these things. Now, technically, they may not have broken any laws. I don't know anything about US law. So everything they've spent the money on might be legitimate, but that's not the point. When you're donating to a charitable cause, you don't expect them to buy a $6 million mansion in California or buy one, exactly the same one, in Toronto in Canada. You don't expect them to be feathering their own nests, which that's what it looks like. They may not have broken any laws, but people are really annoyed that they're not helping the communities. They said they were going to help. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's fundamentally the point. And of course, it is worth saying that Black Lives Matter do actually deny that they, there has been any abuse of, of cash and that this, this one mansion was at least bought for the purposes of the organisation to use and utilise and continue its work. But speaking of continuing that work, Nick, just briefly, I wonder if you can set out how in your charitable work, how actually you've come to the view that Black Lives Matter ultimately harms race relations. Oh, loads and loads of examples. And Black Lives Matter just happened to be the pinnacle of this, which is basically race baiting and race grifting. There's a lot of money to be made in this. There's a lot of money to be made of turning one group of people against another. And this is a centuries old game people play for power and for money. Um, we're doing it with race, we're doing it with sexuality, we're doing it with religions. We've always done it with religions, by the way. Um, so some of the things you can see now going on, I only know about our country, so, so we'll leave the US uh, for another day. But in our country now, the reason why we have young black men dying on the streets, especially in London, is through racism. The people killing them are not racist because they have other young black men. But the reason why the government and the police won't tackle this issue is because they're scared of being branded as racist. So you have professionals saying to themselves and politicians, I would rather these young black men die in pools of their own blood than me to be accused of being a racist and ruining my career. Now that's racism, but that's an acceptable face of it because nobody wants to tackle it. 